In podcast episode number 65, I talked to Dr. Kerstin Lütke about migraine headaches. Kerstin is a physiotherapist, manual therapist, and professor at the University of Lübeck, Germany. She has published over 100 papers on a variety of topics and has done extensive research on migraines. To start out, Kerstin explained the diagnostic criteria for migraines set by the International Headache Society, which are a unilateral pulsating headache of moderate to severe intensity, lasting for 4 to 72 hours, which is aggravated by physical activity with associated symptoms of nausea, photophonia, and phonophobia. About 10% of migraine nerves also suffer from aura symptoms, which are visual symptoms like flickering or colorful lines that occur 30 to 60 minutes before the migraine comes on. We then talked about the pathophysiology behind migraine and Kerstin elaborated that the main driving changes occur in the central nervous system. To be specific, the hypothalamus, also called the migraine generator, reacts 48 hours prior to the onset of the migraine to visual, olfactory or painful stimulation. The migraine symptoms patients experience are due to the trigeminal nerve, which is responsible for pain, hypersensitivity and the feeling of dizziness and nausea. The difference of the hypothalamus of migraine sufferers is probably a lack of inhibition. Next, we talked about risk factors to develop migraine headache. While there is no real genetic explanation, there are about 130 gene changes in people with migraine compared to people without. On top of that, Kerstin stated that migraineurs usually have at least one first-line family member who also suffers from migraine. We followed up with a discussion about migraine triggers. The typical things that patients mention are stress, weather, and specific foods and drinks like chocolate, citrus fruits, coffee, and alcohol. A challenge is that an active hypothalamus might trigger the desire for those foods and drinks in the prodromal phase, so they might not be a trigger at all, but a consequence of an hyperactive hypothalamus. We then moved on to prevalence rates. Kerstin explained that migraines are the most common form of headaches, with a prevalence of 15% globally and a one-year prevalence rate of 20%. While the prevalence of episodic tension type headaches is the highest, with about 80%, those self-reported rather low-intensity headaches never enter the medical system. The chronic tension type headache, with more than 15 headache days per month, is rare with only about 1% prevalence. At last, cervicogenic headaches have a low prevalence as well, with anywhere between 1% and 4%. Afterwards, we looked at epidemiology. Migraine attacks often start with puberty, and the female-to-male ratio is 2 to 1. There might be a hormonal contribution to it, as migraine often stops with menopause. Kerstin further explained that migraine headaches have a high economic burden as it affects people mainly throughout their active, productive life years. An interesting topic we covered were the commonalities and differences of migraine sufferers compared to the chronic pain population. One difference is that migraine patients are very similar to the healthy population between attacks, while chronic low back pain, for example, shows constant changes in the pain perception system. On the other hand, Kerstin's group conducted a study where they were able to show that two-point discrimination of the upper cervical spine is impaired in migraineurs similar to patients who suffer from chronic neck pain. Also, the left-right recognition of heads and faces was impaired in patients with migraine headaches. At last, her group showed that education of pathophysiology of the hypothalamus and about the trigeminal nucleus and the connection between the trigeminal and cervical system was able to reduce migraine frequency by two days per month. In other chronic populations, research shows that patient education plays an important part as well. We then moved on to screening and diagnosis. Kerstin explained that the SNOOP 10 list covers all red flags we need to consider in headaches. When it comes to musculoskeletal complaints of migraine sufferers, Kerstin conducted a Delphi study on examination tests 
followed by another study that showed that 90% of patients with migraine display musculoskeletal dysfunctions. These dysfunctions included provocation and release by the Watson maneuver, manual testing of the upper cervical spine, trigger points in the neck and face, while head forward posture was not different in healthy individuals. Importantly, none of the tests can distinguish migraineurs from patients with cervicogenic headache, not even the flexion rotation test. Interestingly, research shows that parts of the cerebellum are altered in migraine patients and those patients suffer from impaired postural control even outside of headache attacks. This is more pronounced in patients with aura compared to without. Kerstin explained that this is different from vestibular migraine, however, where patients report vertigo. Finally, we moved on to treatment. Kerstin stressed that migraines are not a neck disease, so physiotherapy will never be able to cure migraines. Second, she explained that every migraine patient needs to be able to treat attacks with acute pain medication, such as tryptans, enzymes or CGRP antibodies. As physios, our goal needs to be to treat the musculoskeletal dysfunctions in the neck in order to reduce the frequency of attacks. Several studies she was involved with show that manual therapy and aerobic exercise are able to reduce headache days and that adding patient education is able to further reduce frequency by two days a month. On top of that, Kerstin advised against any sort of sudden changes in, for example, food consumption or sleeping times, as changes might be another trigger for migraines as well. As future research projects, Kerstin is hoping to conduct a large RCT to examine the effectiveness of physiotherapy for patients with migraine and wishes for more research that includes the patient's perspective as well. All right, so this was a brief summary of podcast episode 65 on migraine headaches with Dr. Kerstin Lütke. I hope I could raise your curiosity to listen to the whole episode. If you would like to have more resources, download our PhysioTutors app, it's free, and get access to the transcript and infographic. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in another video. Bye.